It is International Women's Day today, but according to a recent Ipsos report, nearly half of Brits think that gender equality has gone far enough already. This year, the theme is Inspire Inclusion, whatever that means. But in the UK, is there still a need for an International Women's Day or is it patronising and outdated? Joining us now, our political commentator, Esther Kraku, who thinks it's been hijacked by privileged women. Ooh. But the news movement's Rebecca Hudson, who says it should be an important day of action. Uh, Rebecca, let's start with you. I mean, it's, it's, is it the wrong word to talk about celebrating International Women's Day? And I wonder if, if talking about it here in relatively privileged positions, we're kind of missing the point of this. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think celebrating isn't quite the word. I think obviously being a woman is a wonderful thing, but today should be a reminder about how far women have to come, how the fight is not over, whether you want to look kind of globally, you know, we've got 300 years until child marriage will be outlawed. You've got, you know, the women of Afghanistan not able to go to school after primary school age. We have, you know, the women of Iran who are battling every day for the right to show their hair. Come back to the UK three years this week since the murder and rape of Sarah Everard. Two women every week will be killed by an intimate or former um, current or former intimate partner. You know, the battle is has barely started and International Women's Day is nearly 100 years old. Um, and I think today should mark a celebration of how far we've come and how brilliant it is to be part of the sisterhood. But a reminder to everyone and the theme about inclusion, reminding us that this is a battle for everyone, that it's as much for men as it is for women. But that, you know, we have a long way to go to realise the potential and secure the equality of 50% of the world's population. Esther, this talk about being part of the sisterhood as if every, yeah. woman, every woman has to be part of the sisterhood. Well, this is the thing. I, I, International Women's Day, I have no problem with because, of course, we're, always, we're all surrounded by amazing women that inspire us. Sisters, nieces, aunts, mothers. Uh, and I, breakfast and I, anchors. Exactly. Exactly, JJ. I have, I have no Case problem in with point that as well. in the studio this morning. And, and Becca <laughs> makes a great point about highlighting injustices that women face. But the first point is that shouldn't just be on International Women's Day. That should be every day because it's a, it's a human rights issue. Just like, you know, male suicide rates and, and, and you know, white working class boys being at the bottom of scholastic attainment in, in British schools should be an everyday, everyone issue. I think the issue with International Women's Day that I have, it has been hijacked by luxury uh, belief Western feminists that talk about freeing the nipple, right? How many actual Western feminists do you hear talking about women stuck under Taliban rule or women that are not, are not educated just for being women or actual things that affect women across the world that don't revolve around men opening doors for them or having Starbucks lattes, not having their name spelled correctly on them. That's the issue. <laughs> so how do we get the focus back onto well, what it's meant to be? Well, the thing is, you, you have to... You, you, basically have to abolish it because you're going to always have women that are, or, or particularly radical women, that are going to hijack it to, to promote it, this radical feminist agenda. And most women are not concerned with that in other parts of the world. Crazy, crazily enough. They're more concerned about being able to feed their families, being able to have a job where they're paid and able to survive. You know, basic concerns that are actually human rights as opposed to just something that affects women. Yeah, I, I was listening to an interview with the, the singer Annie Lennox, uh, Rebecca, and she was talking about us needing to look at feminism through a global lens. We need to look at what life is like for women around the world, not just for us here in the West. Well, absolutely. There's not a homogenous female experience, is there? You know, and there are battles, as Esther says, on a globe on the global stage. You know, the experience of women in Afghanistan, in Iran, in parts of West Africa. You know, this morning we see 300 school children kidnapped in Nigeria. You know, the threats uh, to to being a woman in those parts of the world are, are very different to the discrimination that we face here in the United Kingdom or in Europe. Um, but that doesn't mean that um, you know our battles, you know, are are over. You know, there we equality looks different depending on your circumstances. Circumstance. Um, and you're right, these are human rights issues. And of course, you know, for every Western feminist who's concerned about the pay gap, who wants the, you know, the ability to free their nipple, we should also remember that there are women across the world who are so far from being, you know, for, for whom for, those for freeing their nipple. Like but that's, but that's, but that's precisely the point. They, they are two diametrically opposed positions. You cannot seriously put p women fighting for the right to free their nipple in the same category as women fighting for the right to not be beheaded. I mean, it's, you can't, you can't, you, they can't all be under the, the rubric of feminism. One is a luxury belief by women that are. Ex sorry, that have that don't have better things to do, and then one of uh, the other is people fighting for their lives. Can, They're two completely different matters. Can I say something as a man? Of course, you is can. that okay? Yeah. Thanks for the permission, ladies. Yeah, so sure. modern, okay. so well, modern. Of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I personally, when I'm hearing women, some women saying Barbie didn't get enough Oscar nominations, those same women then talking to me about plights of women in different countries, I switch off. 
I, I'm, I'm with you, Esther. I can't, I can't, I can't hear a moan about, well, this Margot Robbie deserved an Oscar nomination. That is not the same well, as... A, as... A, tr a trash film. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> this, but this is the thing. When you hear Western feminists whinge about the things that are wrong with their lives, there are women across the world that are just completely disconnected because they, they don't understand what exactly they're talking about. There are women complaining about men opening doors for them. I mean, this, this, that, that, that's completely incomparable to women not being educated by virtue of being women. But, I mean, look, this morning alone in the, in the newspapers, we've been talking about two stories. We've been yeah. talking about the motherhood penalty, the pay gap that is getting bigger between mothers and fathers in the workplace. We've just been talking to two uh, female firefighters and looking at the figures that there's only 8.7% uh, of firefighters are women, no matter how but, much but we cares? talk about this. We're not getting... Well, but, but because we're not complaining about the number of women that are bricklayers, that's, like, 1%. No one has a problem with that. No one has a problem with the fact that most sewage cleaners are not women, right? But we have a problem when we have these 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 occupations that we glorify for some reason are not women, like bankers and 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 what is it, firefighters, firefighters and all of that. Yeah. These are all irrelevant. With the pay gap sort of lie about women having to, to pay a penalty for having children, that is uh, that unfortunately that is a biological. It's function. actually the hourly pay rate. But the, that's the, the, the thing is that that is a biological function that unfortunately falls squarely on the on the shoulders of women because we are the only people that can have children. The important message is how do we raise how how do we nourish families to be able to raise children, productive members of society? Not focusing on, oh, I make less than you because I had a child, so I'm in a, in a dire state. Esther, That's me, not a mature Esther, way to address you. it. Becca, International Women's Day, would it be better spent using this day to educate men so that we can make we can help make the world better for women? You're all invited. We don't need your help. Just treat us the same. We don't want, you know, shortcuts or, um, you know, help, help up the ladder. We just want the opportunity, the equal opportunities that you guys have had for, for centuries. You know, this is about progress for everyone. And progress in Afghanistan looks different to progress in the boardrooms. But women are entitled to opportunities the world over. And that's what today is about. And JJ, of course, you're invited. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and actually, you asked for permission to speak, but actually, yeah, exactly. it requires... That's a good, good, good Boy. No, but it requires <laughs> men like you to speak out. Yeah. And to well, get involved I just, in this You know debate. what? I just want us to celebrate the, the, the home, the, the housewife as much as we celebrate the female banker. And I, and I that's think... That's what today's about, and I, no, I'm about sorry. There's, there's a fixation on the power boss and the, the, the boss girl or whatever phrase they want to use. And I, mm. to be honest, I think there's some women that feel isolated or alienated on International Women's Day. Well, Esther, Rebecca, yeah. thank you very much indeed. Uh, really fascinating That debate. is all...